Okay, thank you. So, uh, my name's Nick Whiteleg. Uh, I am a lecturer at Solent University, uh, which is in Southampton, which is basically the southern UK, basically the middle of the south coast uh, facing France. Uh, so that's basically where I'm based. And I'm here, I'm a long-term OpenStreetMap contributor. I got in, uh, involved in the very early days, 2005 really, when I first met Steve Coast. So I've been uh, involved in OpenStreetMap for an awful long time now. But I'm here today to talk about my augmented reality uh, project uh, called HiCar. Um, okay, now I'm sure most of you know what augmented reality is these days. Uh, the most obvious example is probably Pokemon Go. But basically, it's the augmentation of um, the real world as seen typically through the camera feed of your device, such as your uh, smartphone, your smart glasses, whatever you might be using, with computer-generated data. So that's what augmented reality is, the real world augmented with computer-generated data. Now, there are various variants. I'm not going to go into the variants in great detail because it's really off-topic. Uh, marker-based AR, markerless AR, and, but what, I'm, uh, what HiCar uses is, it hasn't really got a very formal term, but I like to call it geographic AR. Now, geographic augmented reality is the use of the uh, device's GPS location, in other words, its current location on Earth, measured, of course, in latitude and longitude, together with data from the sensors, so the accelerometer and the magnetic field sensor, uh, to work out where on the Earth you are, what direction you're facing, whether you're facing north, south, east, or west, and what the tilt of the device is, and from that, work out what the window on the world is that your phone can currently see. And then what you can do with geographic AR is you can download data, such as OpenStreetMap data, and you can work out what portion of the real world is currently visible uh, on the field of view, the viewport of your device. So um, HiCar uses geographic AR. Um, it doesn't yet use computer vision-based techniques, but I am going to come back onto that later. Uh, so what is the state of geographic AR at the moment? Well, it's been around for a few years now. I think it was around 2010, 2011, that geographic AR first became popular because that's when smartphones first really took off. So Android really took off quite a lot around that time. And there are quite a lot of early uh, geographic AR apps. Uh, Wikitude, uh, they're still going. They're based in uh, Salzburg, I believe. Uh, but they produced uh, essentially a point of interest browser where you could go to a city, uh, you could view the city through your, your phone, through the camera of your phone, and then you could see these great big markers, these great big augmented reality markers, uh, telling you information about a point of interest. So if you're wandering around Heidelberg city centre, for example, and you wanted to know more about the church, let's say, uh, you could point something like Wikitude at the church and it will give you information about it. So those sorts of AR apps have been around for an awful long time now, a good few years since around 2010, 2011. Uh, however, the big problem with a lot of these AR apps is they are closed source and proprietary. Now, obviously, most of us are probably from an open source uh, uh, free software world, FOSS world, so... Um, but the big problem with a lot of AR, a lot of geographic AR, is that it's closed source and proprietary. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Show Me Hills, that's quite a nice app, which points out, uh, it identifies peaks. That is GPL. Uh, but one little explored area of AR is for countryside navigation. So if you're out in the countryside and you want to use AR to help you work out where the path is and where it goes, or the direction to various nearby points of interest, then there hasn't been a great deal of work in this area to date, neither closed source nor open source. Uh, so this is precisely where HiCar, my project, aims to um, step in. So what is HiCar? Well, first of all, I think I'll move forward a slide just to give you a few screenshots. So these are screenshots of HiCar. Uh, some of them are development snapshots, so it might not look exactly like this right now. 
But in the top left, that's somewhere in Northern Ireland, where I went this time last year, and it's pointing the user to the highest peak in Northern Ireland, Sleeve Donard. Uh, it's telling you it's on the left. Uh, bottom left is also on Sleeve Donard. Uh, top right, that shows you a new feature, which I'm going to talk about later, uh, virtual notice boards. And bottom right, again, that shows you a new feature in 0.3, which is the ability to route in augmented reality to a nearby POI. So the left-hand side, too, have been present for about uh, nine months now. Uh, the right-hand side are new features. Right, so Hikar started quite a while ago. Uh, a version of it uh, existed as a standalone app in 2013, and I presented that at State of the Map Birmingham. Uh, however, it was pretty limited in scope. It sort of worked. It wasn't on Google Play. You had to compile it from source, and it only worked in England and Wales. Um, occasional development in the intervening years have really started seriously developing it now for about the last 18 months, uh, primarily due to the increased interest in AR, Pokemon Go, and also uh, AR Core and AR Kit, which are Google and Apple's AR libraries, respectively. Uh, so 0.2, the first version with virtual signposts, was released in March 2019, and 0.3 was literally out this Thursday in the last week. So 0.3 is literally just out. Right, quick words of the, about the architecture of Hikar. So uh, this is a fairly technical talk. I talk about in some detail about how it actually works. Um, so the app Hikar is over there on the left. So it makes a request over to the Hikar API. So there is an API going on on uh, the Hikar server, and that serves OpenStreetMap data. So Hikar is OpenStreetMap based, pretty obviously. Um, how the Hikar API serves OpenStreetMap data in GeoJSON. So uh, the Hikar API sends back GeoJSON data of OpenStreetMap data, and it's a, it uses, it's a tiled server. So it uses the standard XYZ tile format. It serves vector data, obviously, because it's GeoJSON, but nonetheless, it uses the standard XYZ tiling system. Uh, the Hikar API is backed by an OSM PostGIS database, and that's the same PostGIS database that Mapnik uses, so the one that you use OSM2 PGSQL to populate. Uh, as well as that, obviously, an augmented reality app for hikers and outdoor users is going to need elevation data. It's not going to be much use in a hilly or mountainous area without elevation data. Uh, so I also grab elevation data from uh, what are called terrarium tiles, and I'll come back to those in a minute. So that's the overall architecture. Um, so data preparation, I download on an irregular basis about every six months from Geofabric. Uh, filter with osmosis uh, to select the data I want and then import into PostGIS with OSM to PGSQL. So a very standard OSM tool chain there to set up the database. Um, yeah, much of that I've already talked about, um, the elevation data. Now, uh, one point of interest is that the data, once it's been downloaded, is cached on the device. And furthermore, you can download the data in advance from home. So if you are going somewhere where there's a very bad internet connection, you can pre-download the data onto your device, and then you can use Hikar without any internet. Right, so basically it uses a tiling system, as I've said. So when you're at a certain location, uh, what happens is that it downloads um, your current XYZ tile, but also the eight surrounding ones. So that allows you to wander around uh, for some distance before it needs to download any more new data. So it's the current tile and the eight surrounding ones, so nine tiles in total. And then when you move into an adjacent tile, it will download the next nine. And when I say download, I also mean load from file as well. So if you've pre-downloaded the data, this system of downloading the nine surrounding tiles still works from file. OK. So where will Hikar work? Now, it is important to note that it isn't global yet. There's no technical reason why that's the case. It's just due to my hosting. 
Uh, that, this is, a, it is available in the whole of Europe. Uh, so wherever you go in Europe, uh, HiCart will work. Uh, I've tested it in the field in three countries now, UK obviously, Germany and Greece. Uh, but it should work in the whole of Europe. Um, now, if someone is from somewhere outside of Europe, and particularly if you're in a relatively small country, uh, I am quite happy to add other small or sparsely populated countries on an ad hoc basis. So if it's, say, somewhere like Nepal or um, somewhere like that, that's fine. If it's somewhere like the USA, then my server can't handle the whole of the USA at the moment. But if it's just something like the Yosemite National Park, then I'd be quite happy to do that. Okay, um, so many thanks to Hetzner, um, a number of OSM um, contributors, no, a number of OSM contributors alerted me to Hetzner earlier in the year. They do produce very good, uh, uh, good value hosting, so it's thanks to them that I can now host the whole of Europe. Okay, uh, HiCar Web API, I've talked about that, it's a GeoJSON based web API. Uh, it is available on my GitLab, so my GitLab uh, is gitlab.com slash nickw1, so all my projects are hosted there. Uh, if you're interested in the HiCar Web API, it's PHP based, it serves GeoJSON, uh, and it's called FreeMap API because I originally developed it for another project of mine called FreeMap. Uh, and just a quick heads up, uh, I am giving a lightning talk tomorrow at, in the 2.30 session on my other project, Open Trail View, which is basically a street view for walkers, but I won't dwell on that right now. Right, so I talked about terrain. Where do I get that from? That was another of the key features that made Hikar 0.2 upwards possible. Uh, that's from the MapSen terrain tiles. So... Um, that's available as an Amazon web service, and it is available uh, with no usage limits or charges. So again, I was alerted to that from, by a former MapSen employee, and uh, that's where I get my height data from. And again, that's provided as XYZ tiles. Right, on to then to uh, a new feature. I do want to try and go through the new features. Virtual signposts. So this is actually a screenshot from the campus here in Heidelberg. So if you want to, do try, if you want to try HiCar, uh, you can test it on the campus. Uh, so that's an example of a virtual signpost, literally more or less outside the chemistry building. Uh, so how are these generated? Well, basically, first a quick thanks to my colleague Neil Brewis for generating the models. Uh, I'm not a 3D modeler, so that was generated by a colleague. How do they work? Well, first of all, what happens is uh, the OSM data downloaded from the API uh, is, convert is basically created, uh, made a graph. So basically, I create a graph, a routing graph, in other words, a graph with nodes and edges uh, from the OSM data. And for maintainability reasons, in other words, uh, avoiding having to maintain a separate graph, I actually do that on the fly. So the graphs are generated on the fly. You might be thinking that's slow. Well, in my use case, in the high car use case, which is primarily for countryside uh, navigation, it's pretty fast. It's literally, if I'm out in a typical countryside area, the graph will be generated in a couple of seconds. Uh, so the graph is generated on the fly, uh, which uh, saves uh, creating other static graphs, which is good. Uh, so what I do is basically every junction becomes a node in the graph. So I analyze the OSM data for junctions, and each junction becomes a node, and then I create my nodes and edges uh, with nodes at the junctions. However, the weights on the edges, for those of you who have done some work on graphs, the weights are the distances, but the weights are not the straight line distance from node to node. They are actually the distance of the full OSM way counting all the OSM nodes. So the weights are the full real distance of the way, just to make that clear. So next thing is junction detection. How do we do that? So basically, a signpost is generated whenever the user is near a junction. So I've said already that each node in the graph is a junction. 
So what Hikar does is it, it looks at the um, graph, it works out whether there's a node near you, a graph node near you. If there is a graph node near you, then you are at a junction. And if you're at a junction, what uh, Hikar then does is it calculates the bearings of each uh, route along the junction, and it calculates basically the bearings to the first uh, point on the OSM way to get the accurate bearing. Um, and then we route to each POI. So we find all POIs of interest uh, within a five kilometer radius or three kilometer for certain less interesting POIs, such as um, uh, place equals locality, for example, in, in OpenStreetMap. And then for each POI, we use Dijkstra's algorithm and the graph that we've already generated to calculate a route. And then what we basically do is we marry up uh, the route of each, uh, to each POI with each uh, bearing on the junction to assign each POI to an arm. Okay, thanks. Okay, so basically, route to POI, work out the bearing to each POI, compare the bearing to each arm, and then allocate um, destinations to each arm on the signpost. Right, uh, so Hikar will calculate, will basically add up to two destinations to each arm, and uh, we need to prioritize POIs because we only want to show two destinations, and we want to show the two destinations most of interest. So priorities are calculated by a, waiting, a weighted distance, which is basically distance to the POI multiplied by that POI's weight. And here are some weights. So you can see lower weights uh, mean more priority. Cities and towns are the most important, followed by villages, peaks and railway stations, hamlets and suburbs, pubs and cafes and localities. And I've actually refined those throughout the 0.2 series of Hikar. So these are actually refined. And for me personally, they, it, they work nicely, but obviously they can be refined further by doing a full study with potential participants. Okay, exact routing, I think I'll need to skip through. Uh, signpost rendering, uh, they're rendered in OpenGL. I've got OBJ object files, as I said, uh, created by a colleague. Uh, they're supported by uh, a range of uh, European characters supported. So Western European uh, characters are supported, uh, including all the various accents. Uh, Greek is supported and Cyrillic is supported. So if you live in a country which uses one of those three character sets, it should work. AR notice, so I'm going to finish with some new features of 0.3, AR notice boards. So this is a real notice, this is a notice board in Southampton. The lake you might be able to just about see has got a problem with blue green algae at the moment basically because this summer has been very warm and wet in England, so we've had a problem with um, al blue green algae. So that is a real notice board with a real hazard, 80 metres ahead. These notice boards are actually crowdsourced, uh, so the idea is that you as a contributor will add notice boards to point out either hazards or places of interest, such as historical sites, hazards such as, uh, you know, steep paths, rock falls, mad cows, whatever you might want to add. Uh, so you can add uh, hazards yourself at the website, highcar.org. So highcar has got a website, highcar.org. You do need an account to stop people vandalizing the site, uh, to stop people putting van, you know, vandalism notice boards, pretty obviously. Uh, AR routing is the other new feature. Um, with, that's a, a screenshot, so there's a yellow overlay, so you can route to a particular POI. Brockenhurst is a town in the New Forest near where I live, uh, so there's your route. Uh, so that's new for 0.3. And data download zoom levels. So the default zoom level is optimized for rural areas, but with 0.3, you can use, there is an urban zoom level as well. If you want to test this out in uh, Heidelberg, I would strongly recommend using the urban zoom level because the default zoom level will be rather too slow. So the different zoom levels zoom different, uh, basically download different amounts of data. 
uh, the nine tiles will contain 18 square kilometers in the lightly populated zoom level, but in the large urban zoom level, only 2.25 square kilometers. Few issues to do with um, accuracy of the placement. You probably saw those in the screenshots. So you probably saw that maybe the uh, bearing of the path was a little bit off from the real path. Uh, or the path appeared to float. This is, well, the number of causes, inaccuracy in the GPS, inaccuracy in the sensors, and possibly inaccuracy in the OSM data as well. So it's not pixel perfect, it's not pixel perfect AR. It's good enough for navigation, but obviously there is room for improvement there. It's also what I call research where it is on Google Play, but it doesn't have a slick and polished UI. Nonetheless, it is usable. Um, battery life, a problem for this sort of thing generally. Future plans is really linking in really with some of the talks this morning. Uh, really I'm aiming to try and explore machine learning and computer vision to try and improve things somewhat. So an easier place, an easier uh, line of investigation there will be to try and detect um, corners where say two tracks intersect and place a signpost on the corner using computer vision so that it's fixed there and will not, will not move even if the sensors play, are playing around a bit. And I've got a few other areas of interest there which I'm also trying to look at, maybe peaks, peak detection then. Uh, the eventual holy grail will be to try and detect things like trees but I'm not sure whether that's actually po possible right now. Okay, so where, well, as I said, 0.3 is available on Google Play. Just search for Hikar. It's available to download. Source code, it's completely free and open source, this project. So it's on GitLab, uh, gitlab.com slash nickw1 slash Hikar. Uh, so if you do want to contribute to the actual source code, there, then obviously I do welcome contributors. I'm particularly interested in input from machine learning and computer vision experts. And if someone fancies a challenge, conversion to iOS. Uh, if you want to contribute notice boards, again, sign up at highcar.org. Right, uh, I do believe that is it. So contact details there, uh, email, uh, GitLab site again. I am on Twitter, I'm not an avid Twitter user, but I do occasionally use it to announce things together with criticize the British government, but I won't go into that. Uh, but basically, uh, uh, basically, uh, yeah, uh, if there's a key update, I will announce it on Twitter, otherwise email and GitLab. I am around today, rest of today and tomorrow. I'm not here on Monday, I've got to get back to work, but I am around today and tomorrow. Uh, so if you do want to ask me any questions you've got no time for, we've got no time for now, feel free to do so. And we do have time for some questions. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. You hear me? Uh, it's a bit quiet. Uh, no, I'm just wondering, uh, I didn't get uh, when you, you use the, the terrain tiles that you... Yes. You talk about terrain tiles, but I didn't get where you used it. Okay. Oh, uh, the terrarium tiles, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, that I download them for uh, elevation, so basically uh, they're available as ping images, and then I grab the elevation, and then I apply the elevation from the terrarium tiles to the OpenStreetMap ways, so that the OpenStreetMap ways are in 3D. So if you're climbing a mountain, then the augmented reality way will appear in 3D and will appear to go up the mountain. So yeah, maybe I rushed over that a bit, but yeah, the elevation data is applied to the OpenStreetMap vector data so that each point on the way, each node, has a Z coordinate, which is then used for rendering. Yeah. 
Yeah, <coughs> for your uh, virtual uh, pointers. Yeah. Uh, um, have you considered uh, using not only the type of the poi, but also the distance in deciding which one to show? So if you have a hamlet right in front of you and a city in five kilometers. Uh, yeah, it, well. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, do, I actually do that because uh, when I decide uh, what points of interest to show on the signposts, I multiply, I basically get a weighted distance. So it's weight times distance. So, uh, so yes, uh, so yes, I do, I do obviously, so obviously there's a hamlet just in front of you, then obviously the hamlet will show, yeah. So, so the weighting essentially it uses weighted distance, the weight that I showed you multiplied by the distance to the POI, yes. Uh, now, sort of, I mean, basically it's using OSM tagging. Now, I actually use, uh, I've actually sort of gamed the system myself a bit by tagging a couple of peaks which aren't really of interest to tourists with peak equals minor. Now, uh, if a peak, uh, if a natural equals peak is also tagged with peak equals minor, then it will have a lower priority. Uh, and I, I, that happens because I was testing it in the field and there are a couple of sort of hills near where I live which can't even be accessed by the public. They're on private land. They've got no tourist interest of any note. They were being prioritized over nearby villages. Uh, so I, I decided to. So yeah, basically, yeah, uh, certain, uh, that could be done by sort of uh, custom OSM tagging. So if there was some way of trying to prioritize different villages, you know, it could be tourism equals important, I don't know, but it would be interesting to gather uh, sort of um, input from you guys really to, you know, from anyone really who might potentially use Highcar to try and invent new tags which can be used to prioritize those that are going to be most of interest to tourists or other users. Okay, uh, let's thank our speaker again.